Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss the TIDR package. So while analyzing complex data, there can be cases you might receive data in an untidy format. So what TIDR does for you, it helps in restructuring our messy data into a tidy format. So I'm going to cover these three main important functions, gather, separate, and spread. Before that, make sure that IDR package is installed in your system. If it is already there, please call it using the library function. So let's discuss the gather function first using the, uh, the our inbuilt data set, that is the iris data set. As you might already know, the iris data set over here gives you the measurement of variables, say per length, width, petal length, petal width for three different species. So when our data is in such a wide format like iris, we typically want to gather columns together to create a single column. So here is the format for the gather function. So the first argument would be the data, that is your data set. The second would be the key, that is the new column name of the variable. The second would be the value, that is the new column name for the observed values. And the rest would be the columns that will be used for gathering. Let's quickly see how. So I'm going to use gather, iris, the name of the data set. The second argument would be the key. And it is the new call, new name, new column name that I want to give. Say in this case, I want to give classification. You can keep anything you want. And the second uh, argument would be the value. In this case, we have measurements. So I'll just give measurements only. And the rest argument would be what column you want to gather. So in this case, I want to gather sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width in one column. So I'll mention all these column names. Sepal dot length, sepal dot width, petal dot length, and petal dot width. Okay, so yeah, see here. So all the columns has been gathered into one column under the classification column name. That is the key I have mentioned over here. And the values, all the values under all these columns are under the measurements column here and the rest. So that is how I have restructured my data. There's another way of doing it. Instead of adding sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, I can write minus pieces also. It would have done the same. The, the results would have been the same as this. I'll quickly cover another example for the gather function using the table 4A. This is again an inbuilt data set. Uh, it has information for these three countries for the number of TB cases for these two years. So for restructuring, I'd use the pipe operator here. Say so I'll give the table 4A and then do the gather function. Since I'm using the pipe operator, I need not to give the first argument as the data set. So I can give the key as, say, in this case, year. And the value is, since it is number of cases, so cases, and what column I want to restructure. So 1999 and 2000, the column name. So this is how I convert it the column name into rows and the values are there under the cases column here. so this is how you use a gather function so let's discuss the separate function so we might get data where we have two variables in one column for example we have an inbuilt data set called table three if you notice over here under the rate column you have two variables Say the first uh, number is the number total number of cases, and 
then we have the total number of population. To split this one column into two, we have to use the separate function. So let's see the format of this function. So the first argument of this function would be the data, the data set name. The second argument would be the column that you want to split, the column name of that column. The third argument would be the name of the new columns that you will get after splitting. And the last argument would be the separator between these columns. OK, so let's get started. I will use the separate function and the data set name, in this case, table 3. And then the column that I want to split, say the rate column I want to split. And into since it's uh, it's going to be split into two columns so it has to be in a vector form so the first column name can be anything say in this case i'm putting cases and the second name is population you can choose to rename whatever you want and the separator so in this case the separator would be in your uh, quotations and the separator in this case is your forward slash so this is how we separate the rate column into two, the cases and population. So that's how the separate function works. So spread is the opposite of gather. There can be instances where you might prefer wider format to the data. For example, in this case, I use the inbuilt data set table two. It has details of the TB cases for these three countries, year, and the number of cases in population. So using the split function, I can you know, split this type column into two. Before that, let's see what is the format of the spread function. So in spread, so in spread, the first argument would be your data, that is your data set name. The second argument would be the key column in the data set that will be spread further. The third argument is the value uh, that is the column that contains the observation. So let's see how uh, I will spread the table to dataset name and the key will be I want to spread which column name the type column name and the third argument is the value which so I will have to name that column which has observations. So the count column over here has the observations. So if you see over here, what the spread function does it, it spreads the data from one column type to multiple column cases and population. So the column is being, the, so the rows uh, is being converted into the column names. So that is how the spread function works.